nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. I wanted to talk to you guys about the really iconic graffiti artist, Revoke. And more specifically, I wanted to take a look into how he transitioned from graffiti artist to fine artist. During this look into Revoke, we're also going to take a look at what he thinks about that transition. So with that said, I want to know what you guys think about that transition in the comments down below. How do you feel when a graffiti artist transitions into fine art? I ask because I know fine art isn't really popular amongst graffiti artists. And while over the last decade it certainly has grown in popularity amongst graffiti artists, that's merely just a drop in the pond. Now this is a pretty long article, but I'm going to link to it in the description down below just in case any of you guys are interested, you can go ahead and check it out down there. For the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and summarize this. He starts off by saying how he's done graffiti for the past 28 years and he's mostly accomplished what he wanted to do. He also makes note and says that he paints a graffiti for graffiti's sake. And although that experience has led him in his current place today, making art is about making art. And I think this is something that, that we're, we're seeing kind of change in graffiti because nowadays with social media, people don't really do graffiti for graffiti's sake. They started it because they wanted to get big on social media or they wanted to use it as a tool to post on social media. And then he goes on to say something that I honestly relate to wholeheartedly. And he says, I do, to this day, feel very trapped and stigmatized by being recognized first as a graffiti writer, which that's something I can 100% understand. He goes on an interesting story where he says that pretty much no one around him really valued art, and art to him was essentially album covers, skateboard graphics, and comic books. It wasn't until years later where he became friends with Saber, Retina, and Reyes, and it was kind of these guys that were interested in art. And Revoke at the time still didn't really care about art. He kind of was kind of like, you know, I'm gonna do my own thing and hang out. However, Saber would share his ideas. He would share what he was learning in school and he would talk about art around Revoke. And Revoke was blown away when he saw a graffiti artist in a museum. That blew his mind. He couldn't handle it, man. He couldn't fathom it. Now, this is another part I found really interesting. Around the year 2000, he began questioning himself and why he did what he did. Why he did graffiti. And I believe this is something that a lot of graffiti artists end up asking themselves at some point. You almost have to. Especially if you started graffiti younger and you did it illegally. You come to this point where responsibility trumps out what it is you want to do. And while you may want to go out and paint graffiti, you're going to get to a point where you can't. And that's where this question begins. Where then you begin to kind of second guess why it is you're doing what you're doing and if there's a different way to go about doing this thing. He goes on to say, what's the point of doing this, you know? I was constantly trying to find new ways to keep my graffiti interesting and continue evolving it. But at a certain point, it started feeling redundant and boring. And that's something right there that I've come in contact with personally. I find that for me personally, fine art offers a great opportunity in order to mix things up. It's always different. He had designed his life to pretty much prioritize graffiti and for years he was essentially a career criminal as he put it. And he was getting exhausted of it, he was getting tired. And it really sucked when, you know, his pieces would get buffed and all that. And he'd sit there like, man, I just, I just did all this for what? I did it for, I did it for what? It's all gone. So he came to a point where he wanted to go ahead and create things that would outlive him. And as we all know, graffiti's not the best thing for that because, well, the buff exists. So 2009 is pretty much when he started playing around with new ideas and graffiti stopped being a priority. He decided to go ahead to Detroit and hang out with, you know, a little artist you might have heard of next. And then, boom, he gets arrested. He spends a couple of months in jail, which he says was probably one of the best things for him, honestly, because he had a lot of time to sit there and think. Think about what he was going to do with his life once he was released from jail. And upon his release, he decided he didn't want to do any kind of gestural painting. He wanted to find an unfamiliar means of creating, because he knew if he went back to that gestural form of painting, then he would revert back to graffiti and use that kind of as a crutch, and he didn't want that. So he needed to find a new means of creating. And it's at this point that Next went ahead and helped him kind of get into woodworking a little bit, because Next knew a lot more about that. And over time, Revoke would gain an interest in the more mechanical means of creating. He wanted to capture a way to get the excitement of using spray paint for the first time and he ended up developing a tool that holds a bunch of cans. I'm sure you guys have seen him use it. It's what he uses to draw fancy lines on walls. And this was how he was able to kind of recapture that for himself. That feeling of once again using a can for the first time. And it seems like he enjoys the juxtaposition, no pun because we're reading an interview from Juxtapose, because as he puts it, using this more mechanical means of making lines with spray paint seems as if it has a set path. You have all these cans in a row and you know where they're going to go as you guide that massive tool across the wall. 
but there's still room for spontaneity. There's still room for some kind of chaos to happen amongst all that order. And it seems like he finds that to be a great deal of fun. I'm gonna wrap it up there because once again, this article is massive. But guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. How do you feel about Revoke's transition from graffiti to fine art? And how do you feel about graffiti arts in general transitioning from graffiti to fine art? As I said before, I think it's almost necessary for graffiti artists to do, especially if they want to elevate past a certain point. But that just about brings us to the end of today's video. So if you guys enjoyed it, let me know with the like button as it helps out a bunch. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. We're going to be having some more tutorials coming up soon. So join the smartest graffiti community anywhere online. I'll catch you guys next week. Thank you for watching. Peace.